Good morning. Welcome to the continuation class on drugs affecting gastrointestinal motility. In today's class, we will be discussing the pharmacology of antiemetics. These are drugs used to prevent and stop vomiting and nausea. Now, this diagram here gives you an overall bird's eye view of the different centers which are involved in the vomiting reflex and the site of action of the different antiemetic drugs. So here you notice histamine antagonists, muscarinic blockers, dopamine antagonists and cannabinoids. They act at the level of the chemoreceptor trigger zone which is present in the area prostrema of the potent. Benzodiazepines act at a higher level. Whereas the 5-HT3 antagonists act peripherally, meaning at the level of the stomach and small intestine. So this is again a recapitulation of what you learned in your physiology. The act of vomiting involves the higher centers, including the vomiting center and the chemoreceptor trigger zone, the different inputs or stimuli. There is relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter, the stomach contracts and the gastric contents are expelled through the mouth. Now coming to the classification of antiemetic drugs. This is based on both the chemistry and the receptor level of action. In the first group we have anticholinergics. We have one drug here, scopolamine also called thiosin which we have discussed under the autonomic nervous system. The second group are the dopamine antagonists. Here we have non-selective dopamine antagonists, meaning they block both D1 and D2 receptors. This group we have clofomazine and promethazine. Then we have selective D2 antagonists, metoclopramide and domperidone. Then we have the third major group that is the 5-HT3 antagonists. <coughs> Excuse me. In this group, important drugs are ondansetron, granisetron, tropicetron. Now, of these 5-HT3 antagonists, this is a 5 mark question. Then we have 5-HT4 agonists, cisapride and zacopride. And in the fifth group, we have the histamine H1 blockers, cyclozine and diamond hydramine. And finally, the miscellaneous groups. Group, we have the cannabinoids, corticosteroids, and pyridoxine. So, in the classification of antiemetics, we have six groups, namely anticholinergics, dopamine antagonists, 5-HT3 antagonists, 5-HT4 agonists, H1 blockers, and the miscellaneous. Now, among the anticholinergics, we have mentioned that scopolamine or hyosin is the one which is used. Scopolamine blocks the muscarinic receptors in the vestibular apparatus. Therefore, scopolamine is also known as a vestibular sedative. Scopolamine or hyosin is effective only in motion sickness, that is, when a person experiences nausea and vomiting when there is unaccustomed movement like traveling by bus, train, ship or going in a merry-go-round or a roller coaster. Because scopolamine blocks the muscarinic receptors in the vestibular apparatus only. Scopolamine is not effective in vomiting due to other causes. Scopolamine is given as a tablet or can be given intramuscular injection where it lasts duration of action is up to 6 hours or can be given as a transdermal patch. The duration of action of the transdermal patch is for 3 days. And scopolamine should be given at least 30 minutes before the journey begins. Adverse effects because of the muscarinic block include dry mouth and blurring of vision. Dopamine antagonists form an important group of antiemetic drugs. The non-selective drugs are Chlorpromazine and promethazine, meaning they block both D1 and D2 receptors centrally, which means they need to cross the blood-brain barrier. 
In addition to blocking D1 and D2 receptors, chlorpromazine also blocks the histamine H1 receptors centrally. So there is some amount of sedation. Chlorpromazine is effective in almost all types of vomiting except motion sickness because it does not have any effect on the vestibular apparatus. Therefore, chlorpromazine is not effective in motion sickness. Now this is a pre mark question. Give reason. Chlorpromazine is not effective in motion sickness. The reason is chlorpromazine blocks D1, D2 and H1 receptors centrally. It does not block the muscarinic receptors of vestibular apparatus, therefore not effective in motion sickness. Because of dopamine block centrally, the expected adverse effect of chlorpromazine is extrapyrimary symptoms, also called drug-induced Parkinsonism. Now coming to the selective D2 antagonists. In this group we have metoclopramide and domperidol. There are one or two important differences between metoclopramide and domperidol. So the mechanism of action of both metoclopramide and domperidol is multiple. One is blockade of D2 and type D2 receptors in the chemoreceptor trigger zone. Second, 5-HT3 antagonism or block both centrally and peripherally. By peripherally, we are referring to the gastrointestinal tract. Then 5-HT4 agonist action in the gastrointestinal tract. Then increase the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter. So you notice here that metoclopramide and domperidone have multiple mechanisms of action. D2 antagonism centrally, 5-HT3 antagonism both central and peripheral, 5-HT4 agonist action in the gastrointestinal tract and increase in tone of lower esophageal sphincter peripheral. Now one of the major differences between metoclopramide and domperidone is metoclopramide crosses the blood-brain barrier. Therefore it can produce extrapyrimidal symptoms or drug-induced Parkinsonism and hyperprolactinemia. <coughs> Domperidone does not cross the blood-brain barrier, therefore it does not have this adverse effect of extrapyrimidal symptoms. Domperidone on intravenous administration can cause cardiac dysrhythmias, headache, dry mouth and diarrhea when administered per oral. So the important adverse effects of metoclopramide are because it crosses the blood-brain barrier, it can cause drug-induced Parkinsonism and hyperprolactinemia. Whereas domperidone intravenous causes cardiac dysrhythmias and on oral administration, headache, dry mouth and diarrhea. Now coming to the 5-HT4 agonists, <coughs> cisapride and zacopride. These drugs enhance acetylcholine release in the gastrointestinal tract and promote forward propulsion. They also increase the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter. Please note, cisapride and zycopride do not have any action centrally, that is no action on chemoreceptor trigger zone or the vomiting center. Cisapride and zacopride are used in the treatment of post-operative cancer and ca cancer chemotherapy, sorry, post-operative vomiting and cancer chemotherapy induced vomiting. Now because they increase forward propulsion, the expected adverse effects are abdominal cramps and very rarely headache. Metoclopramide, domperidone, cisapride and zacopride are called prokinetic drugs, which is a five mark question. They are called prokinetic drugs because they act on the gastrointestinal tract, 5-HT4 receptors and promote forward propulsion. Therefore, they are called prokinetic drugs. One of the major problems associated with cancer chemotherapy, whether it is the use of drugs or radiation, is vomiting and nausea, which can be very, very severe. Now this happens because once the anti-cancer drug begins to kill the cancer cells, a lot of 5-HT, 5-hydroxytryptamine is released, which causes nausea and vomiting. So these drugs were developed 
specifically to treat cancer chemotherapy and cancer radiation induced vomiting. This group includes Onbancetron, Granicetron, Tropicetron, Palinocetron and Dolacetron. So these drugs block the 5-HT3 receptors both in the brain and in the gastrointestinal tract, thus preventing nausea and vomiting. In addition, Onbancetron group increases the tone of the lower esophageal sphincter. Note that there is no action on the dopamine receptors centrally, therefore 5-HT3 antagonists do not produce drug-induced Parkinsonism or extrapyramidal symptoms. So the main use of the 5-HT3 antagonists, namely Onbancetron, Granicetron, Tropicetron is to control cancer chemotherapy induced vomiting and nausea. The adverse effects are abdominal cramps, dizziness and headache. Nausea and vomiting associated with pregnancy, which is called morning sickness, is controlled using pyridoxine. Thank you. So the possible questions from the antiemetics are 1. 5 HTP antagonists, prokinetic drugs. These are very frequently appearing 5 mark questions. Thank you.